A reading from the book of Ruth. Once in a time of the judges, there was a famine in the land. So a man from Bethlehem of Judah departed with his wife and two sons to reside on the plateau of Moab. Elimelech, the husband of Naomi, died, and she was left with her two sons who married Moabite women, one named Orpa and the other Ruth. When they had lived there for ten years, both Amalon and Chilion died also, and the woman was left with neither her two sons nor her husband. She then made ready to go back from the plateau of Moab, because word reached her there that the Lord had visited his people and given them food. Orpa kissed her mother-in-law goodbye, but Ruth stayed with her. Naomi said, See now, your sister-in-law had gone back to her people and her God. Go back after your sister-in-law. But Ruth said, Do not ask me to abandon or forsake you, for wherever you go, I will go. Wherever you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people, and your God will be my God. Thus it was that Naomi returned with the Moabite daughter-in-law Ruth, who accompanied her back from the plateau of Moab. They arrived in Jerusalem at the beginning of the barley harvest. Responsorial Psalm Praise the Lord, my soul. Blessed is he whose help is in the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord his God who made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them. Praise the Lord, my soul. The Lord keeps faith forever, secures justice for the oppressed, gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets captives free. Praise the Lord, my soul. The Lord gives sight to the blind, the Lord raises up those who were bowed down. The Lord loves the just. The Lord protects strangers. Praise the Lord, my soul. The fatherless and the widow he sustains, but the way of the wicked he thwarts. The Lord shall reign forever. Your God, O Zion, through all generations. Alleluia. Praise the Lord, my soul. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. But when the Pharisees had heard that he had put the Sadducees to silence, they were gathered together. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tempting him, and saying, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. In life, when we find ourselves in front of great crisis, we will do everything even that which we should never do because we want to survive. In our first reading, Elimelech's family 
left their land and went to the foreign land. This was so because the, there was famine in their land. Their stay in the foreign land was not for good, but they would stay there while there was famine in their land, but their lives there was not even easier. Elimelech, the father of the family, soon died, and Naomi was left with their two sons. Later, her two sons got married to the Moabite women, Orpa and Ruth. Another sad thing happened to the life of Naomi. Later, her two sons also died. She was left alone with her two daughters-in-law, three childless widows. Being widows at that time means belonging to the lowest class in the society. No one would support them. Maybe if strangers would give them something, it would be a great blessing for them. Life would have been so difficult for these three widows, especially for Naomi, who was much older than the other two and had no one else in Moab to help her. It must have been a desperate situation for her. It must have been an experience much more than having famine. Yet, Naomi was trying to survive despite all this. Could this be God's punishment for them? She could have asked herself while experiencing all this. When she planned to go back to her land Israel, she told her daughters-in-law to go back to their land Moab. While Orpah preferred to stay in Moab, Ruth, however, did not dare to leave her mother-in-law. It must have been a great consolation to Naomi in her desperate situation of having someone with her. Sometimes in our lives, it is just hard to understand why tragic things should happen. And we oftentimes wonder, why do they happen when in fact we are not that worst person to experience all this, which seem to be God's punishment? When we are in the lowest situation in life, especially the tragic ones, we can think of something more positive. But we always think, that it seems that God is punishing us. Naomi's experience was much more tragical. Having lost, having lost all whom she loved and was left alone, a widow and helpless. Yet, she continued to move on in life, counting the good things that exist in her present life. She had two daughters-in-law with her, and one remained faithful to her. Ruth's faithfulness to her must have been the, the greatest thing at the moment that helped Naomi accept and forget the tragedy in her life. Naomi knew how and where to keep her gaze in order to move on in life. She sees God's hand even in the hardships she experienced. Let us learn from Naomi's way of facing and accepting life as it is and see God's hands in every experience. Let us pray. When evil darkens our world, give us light, Lord. When despair numbs our souls, give us hope. When we stumble and fall, lift us up. When doubts assail us, give us faith. 
When nothing seems sure, give us trust. When ideals fade, give us a vision. When we lose our way, be our guide, that we may find serenity in your presence and purpose in doing your will. Amen. Thank you.